Hello and welcome to Simon on the Sofa. I always sound like a TV presenter when I start that. Hello and welcome to the sofa. So today I'm gonna, um, I'm with Dennis. This is Dennis. Hi. <laughs> Hello, Dennis. And um, as you know, the, 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 the sofa is all about self-awareness and uh, love and loving yourself and finding, uh, you know, exploring, shall I say, not necessarily finding, but exploring questions that are, that I've had going around in my, uh, my head for a long time. And uh, a lot of them are about basically love. And if, uh, if love is lost, if we're abusing love, and um, if we can break away from the ego identification of love and actually come back to pure, a pure love, unconditional love, love that we, uh, we have, a lot of people have for their um, newborn babies and some people have told me that they can't actually experience uh, unconditional love until they until you have a child and uh, I uh, I don't agree with that um, not completely so Dennis I uh, was working on a little bit of uh, uh, questions to ask you okay okay so first of all um, explain to me what love means to you in uh, in a nutshell in a nutshell. Yeah. Um, so if someone said to you, literally, if I say to you, you know, uh, what does love, you know, describe love for me? Ah, oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, describe love for you. Yeah. I suppose love is allowing someone to be themselves, warts and all. Yeah. And still accepting and lo loving them for it. Um, so complete acceptance of individuality. Yeah, I think that's really important. I mean, don't get me wrong, you hear people who have children, sons or daughters who've done inexplicable things and they say, look, you can't be around me, but I still love you with yeah. views of my heart. So, you know, they still love them, but for whatever reason, they're deciding, no, you need to go on your journey in order to maybe find part of yourself before you can re-enter my life, but it doesn't mean I'm stop loving you. I think love's really complex. Um, I think it's overused yep. today in society way too much. Definitely. You know? I think guys use it a lot because it can get them a girl. Yep. I think girls want guys to say it because they want to have that feeling, although yep. they know it might not mean anything. Um, so I think it's really complex. And I think maybe love nowadays of how it's expressed or how we see it is about what something looks like or what some someone might have or what I might have in that kind of way. So I think the whole idea of love is quite distorting. Definitely. Um, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree completely. Um, because funny enough, I, I, I was with a, um, uh, a lady uh, recently is my agent actually I, I have a commercials I have a commercials uh, casting agent and uh, and I don't do commercials anymore and I went I went in to speak to her because I haven't had a commercial for a number of years and and with with my new uh, my new uh, I don't like saying belief but my new view on consumerism and uh, commercials a, a lot of uh, a lot of commercials I think um, you know lead us down the wrong path, make us want things we don't want and so on. But that's another, that's another talk. So I go in to speak to, to um, my commercials agent and uh, we just got talking. She asked how it was and, and I said this and I said I'm doing some writing and, and uh, working on a couple of ideas and, you know, they're about love. And she goes, oh, you should love. And I goes, yeah, I goes, because, you know, everybody, everybody is, uh, is, is looking for love or seeking love. And she goes, she goes, no, that's not true. And... Um, I said, yeah, I, I, I goes, I think at the core, essence of our core, we are seeking love. And she goes, no, not, every, not everybody wants love. And I goes, that depends on what your interpretation of love is. Because would you say everybody wants to be happy? And she went, yeah, happy, yeah. And I said, okay, so happiness, truth, joy, uh, positivity, feeling good, um, you know, um, what else? Even fear. Um, um, anxiety, all of these things can encapsulate love. Okay, so the, the way I see love and since having the, this new realization is that it's about being in love 
but within love you have everything so so like you said some people they would say um you know i love you you know um because over a partner for example yeah but but that's the that's the distortion the, the, in, in my in my mind is that the 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 view of love is completely distorted yeah in the sense of oh i love that glass i love the color blue um i love that uh, candle holder i really love that camera well, you know what i love your socks you know but um that isn't actually love it's the word love mm. and we're using it but that's not even that's not actually what love is so i i see love as being this almost like a, a bubble imagine a bubble yeah mm. and we and you can create a bubble you you can create love and in, within that love everything happens so it's the way you speak to another it's um you know it's the way you um accept exactly what you said accept other people what's and all good or bad criminal not criminal you know understand love allows you to have compassion and compassion it is a deep you know these are all words to you know to try and deepen the the essence of love but love is compassion love is understanding mm. love is acceptance no condition no expectation no judgment now f- think of that and think if in, in any partners that you've had or or any partners that you have now there's judgment mm-hmm. there's expectation there's condition like like you know if i if i am um, if i for example meet you and dennis uh, is a producer and makes films and stuff and dennis says to me i want you in my film and you know i'm in this place of love so called so called place of love and i'm vibing and i'm really happy to go on his film and he he calls me on the film and all of a sudden you know the first day it all goes a bit mad i'm really excited it all goes a bit mad and stuff and then I'm I come to a film set and then I start going well what's happening you know this isn't this is crap this is you know what sort of bloody filmmaker are you what sort of producer are you yeah um you're rubbish and you're like well you know I've had a few problems today but you know we're going to iron them out I iron them out I don't want to work with you you're no good to me so all of a sudden I don't I'm not in love mm. I'm in this place of judgment and I have condition on you because you've told me you're a filmmaker and I've come to you to make a film So I'm going with this. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not I'm not um I'm not digressing from from what love is but what we've done is we love that which we um uh which serves us. We love that which we like. Mm. But we don't love what we don't like. Mm-hmm. But love doesn't there's no um like a uh, levels or I don't see a level of love. So like for example you, you can't I have this notion that you can't harm that which you love. Full stop. Because if you're in this bubble of love, yeah, then you can't harm that which you love. Yet how many people in the name of love kill? How many people in the name of love abuse? How many people in the name of love um condition and judge and expect? You see where I'm going with it? Mm. So what do you what what do you what do you think to that i know it's broad and it's a big thing but this is you know this is the question in that i'm uh, that i'm going down okay um lots taken i think maybe people when they say they love this i love that they mean they really like and i think that's the substitution of the word love definitely which in term has kind of watered down what is the meaning of love but as you were speaking i was thinking is there a difference between love or being loved good question and you know people are people striving for love or to be loved yeah yeah great question okay so are they are they striving for love are they striving for love or to be loved yeah well i believe that most people because of fear um inadequacy um re- needing of recognition and and all these other judgments that we have on ourselves that are instilled to us from a young age yeah from our parents teachers film television uh, um movie stars and whatever we have these judgments that we create on ourselves so we 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 are searching for love yeah so we are we are needing love and we need it to fulfill the void that we've created ourselves mm-hmm. okay so i think that we all think we need love to fulfill this need but what i what i believe we are already love 
So it's like we've detached ourselves from who we are using, using the word love as who we are because I know we can get lost on words here so I don't want to do that but what I want to do it, or, or, or what I'm questioning is that we have all these conditions and also again expectations and judgments of love you know love should be this you should act a certain way and then that's love if you show me this you've loved me if you buy me flowers every friday night and take me out on the weekend that's love i feel loved from that but this is all our own um our own inadequacies this is uh, this is what 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 the um what the sofa is about through self-awareness you realize you are love you can only be love and you are only in love Do you see what i mean mm -hmm. so then once you have that awareness and you understand that it changes your actions changes your actions by how you view yourself how you view other people mm -hmm. how you accept people mm -hmm. it changes everything Do you see what i mean because all of a sudden you realize that well if i'm love and i was born as love because you agree um, I'm sure your mum said, you know, having uh, given birth to you was, you know, an amazing experience, a mm -hmm. beautiful thing. I'm sure you've got friends who are, have had children, am mm -hmm. I right? Mm -hmm. And what do they say? Uh, have you spoke to any um, uh, mums or, or friends that have been mums that have spoke about having children? What, mm -hmm. what have they said? Well, I can't remember the top of my no. mind, but, you know, it's a joyous equation, um, once in a lifetime experience, but you can experience more than once. <laughs> Um, connection, they've mentioned connection to like a source, connect, connection to something deeper than... But the, they're, they're people we've spoken to. I mean, what about those who don't want to have a child? Yeah, who, exactly. You know, who um, the thought of having it makes them sick. Yeah. You know, the association that child has to the person who they may be conceived with. Yeah. And so, so on one level, yes, there are people who see it in that kind of way and selfless and whatever, I don't mind. But other people, it could be actually, I mean, we know of people who grow up and they're kind of semi-despised by their parents. It could be their mum because yep. of their dad. Yeah. And they remind, every day it reminds them of their dad. It could be a dad because of the mum, you know. So it's kind of, I think it's like, it's something we all, well, I wouldn't say something we all strive for. Because it's like, I think some people will say, well, what is love? Yeah, yeah. I, I, think, I think a lot of these things, it's like you need to, well, you hope to have an experience of it because then that's something you can mirror. And if you don't have something that you can see as being love, well, how do you know what it is or where it leads to? And that's where it comes to love of all these other things. You know, I love this, I love that. Or I don't love it. So I, I think it's kind of um, your environment, how you've been brought up. Um, and when I say how you've been brought up, some people have had the best things up in the world and they're devoid of it. Yeah, exactly. Some people have had the worst things up, what, what we might describe as terrible bringing up, immense you know, challenges and difficulties, and they just exude love because they might have seen the opposite of it. So it's not like if you're born this way and you have that, you have it. Far from it. I think it's probably a deeper thing inside someone and maybe, you know, it's a bit like, and change the subject slightly, it's a bit like, um, for example, someone who might start at Sainsbury's and, you know, his children have everything, yet they don't have that edge of what their father had to create this phenomenon because they don't have that drive. They don't have, you know, they don't know what it's like to really want to thrive because they had it all, in a way. So they've yeah. never had that kind of hunger. I'm not saying it's like love, but it's like someone who hasn't. And you then hear of people who have done extraordinary things from, you know, very humble surroundings because it's that, it could be that drive or that need for it which propels them to put all their energy in order to find it. It could be, for example, someone who's been fortunate enough to be, have a great loving family and they have that loving family because that parent, whether it be the mother or the father, didn't have love when they were younger. And they made a decision, when I have my family, because that's what I have control over, I'm going to be the parent that I feel I should be. But so, is that love? Hmm? But, th but that doesn't mean it's going to be loving. Because but it doesn't mean it's not going to no, be No, 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 totally. Either. Yeah, totally. But for example, if somebody... Um, 
and no, it's not really gone off the subject. It, it's, it's good. So if somebody creates something for, for, for example, Sainsbury's or any other, um, you know, achievement for whatever, for whatever reason, you know, whatever, whatever it is, if you make a film, whatever, the act of doing that isn't necessarily love and isn't from a base of love. Not, well, on one level, no, but the other side is what people, some people say, and I kind of feel it's true, is, you know, I was watching something by Gary Vaynerchuk the other day when he says, you know, I mean, do what you love. Yeah. And when people who excel in something, it's deep love for what they want to do. And that, you know, it could be anything that someone might love wood, love it so much. They love the texture, the shapes, different words create different things and then what they can create from it. There's a deep love in what they're doing. Yeah. And that exudes in what they do. So it's like, I'm, you know, it's not just saying love's about a person. It's about... No, it's not just about It's, it's about an inner feeling, okay, which good. can then be used good. through your life in lots of different ways. So using, say, the Sainsbury's example, I don't know anything about Sainsbury's, but I just thought... No, I'd no, of course. That. You know, in order to do that, that person may have or loved the idea of offering convenience to people. Yeah. Of being in service to people. Yeah. Of, you know, seeing what was missing and thinking, oh, I see there's something that people was missing. That they loved the idea of that so much. That's what propelled them to do what they did, which created this its own world in itself. So I feel that, you know, and we can go to the other side, you know, where can love get you? You know, is love always a great thing or not? You know, we hope it is, but someone could love money so much to the detriment that they'll do anything to get money. Oh, people love drugs. And affect someone so much, so it's detrimental. That love is... But I'm, but, I'm saying, but I'm saying that that isn't love. Do you see where I'm coming from? So, so for example, if, you say, if I say to you, Man, I love getting high, you know. At the weekend, I love getting high. I love going to the club. I go to this great nightclub down in, uh, in London called Pasha. I meet up with a couple of guys down there. We pop a couple of ecstasy tablets and I love it. I love getting high. I love taking ecstasy. I have a great weekend. I love the weekends that I have down there. And you know what? Um, I love it. I just love it so much that, you know, it gives me a buzz, right? Now, what I'm saying is that isn't love. We're using the word love. But it isn't love. This is this, this is where I'm getting, and it's a very it's a very tricky thing because somebody that says, for example, you know, um, I love you know I love doing what I'm doing, but I'm putting poison in my body, right? You don't you. I can't see how you can love yourself or the thing that you're doing if you are putting poison into your body. And I've been there. I can't see how you can love a partner. Yeah, and say that you love a partner, but you abuse her, you kill her. I can't say how you can go to war and kill um, innocent children and people, but say that you're doing it for the love of your country. I can't say that you can, um, you can say that you, um, whatever, whatever else, think, you know, think of anything that, that, that we use. Well, the, the point is we throw the word away. We completely throw the word away and it's become, it's, it's, it has no meaning. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's lost its meaning because nobody actually knows what it means. And maybe, you know, and, and I'm not saying I fully, fully know what it means. This is part of the discovery. Um, you know, I'm not saying, but what I have seen in my short um, sojourn on this uh, on this planet is that there's a hell of a lot of people talking love, saying love, but there is no love happening. So, so for example, my my thing is that until you notice that love within yourself, until you notice um, that deep essence of who you are, of a living, breathing organism, until you connect to the fact that you can breathe and you can see and you can have, you've got limbs and you've got these muscle fibres and you've got these, um, you know, explosions going on in your body and this intestine, metres long of intestine that functions and you've got this circulatory system and liver and you can, you can, you know, you, gravity's holding you down and trees give you oxygen and water in, in, in this sea is the lungs of this planet and we're part of this planet until you connect to that as you could say love is God God is love everything is love right and when you connect to that you can't sell a product to somebody you know is giving them cancer 
you can't snort cocaine because you know that it's fundamentally fur in your arteries and it's going to kill you. You can't sit down and drink copious amounts of, um, uh, drink um, litres of alcohol because it's poisoning your body. You can't smoke marijuana all day because you know it's poisoning you and it doesn't do anything good for you. Do you see where I'm coming from? I'm I, I, I see where you're coming from and I agree with you. So, so but, we can't use the word love but, if we're not but, in but love. I'm going to jump back to the X D. Please, thing, please, please. It's kind of interesting. Go on. Um, just say, as a scenario, this person loves going raving. Yep. Wherever you I've been raving. Going. I've yeah. taken the ecstasy. I've, they I'm love there. Taking a, yeah. They love all this. They yeah. love all that. Why do they love it? Because... The feeling that it's given no, them. No, no, but, yeah, it takes them out of their life. Yeah, escapism. You know, that's what they don't love. Yeah. Therefore, by removing what they don't love and being in a different state... They love that. Okay, my association of love is wrong, but for that, for that hour, for that evening, for that day, they get to feel the euphoria or natural, the unnatural high of what a natural high of love is, and that's what they're translating Beautiful. as being Beautiful. love. So, uh, so, uh, but that's not love. No. But then the question is, we come back. No, no, stay on the ecstasy thing because it's no, great. No, I'm glad you brought that up. But the question thing is, what is love? If you, if you don't love yourself for any reason, and you're not in an environment where people show love, and you have no references for love, then you're going to, you might do something or get involved in something that gives you a feeling that you don't know how to describe. And well, it feels great because I don't have that feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, then, you know, you, it's all right saying, you know... Which might be self-harm, might be hanging around with the wrong crowd, it, it, might be taking drugs, all of that. It, it could be all of all that. All of that, yeah? yeah. It could be really destructive, yeah. you know, and on a term, it's not love. Yep. Yeah. It's not love, yeah, it's not love. However, the, 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 I think it goes into probably... a deeper question inside is this makes me feel how I want to feel what love would make me feel like this makes me feel my idea yes. of love yes right so stay on the ecstasy thing because it's great that you mentioned that so people take ecstasy tablets as I say again I've I've taken right I've taken ecstasy and at at that point of taking ecstasy, which m many of the times I, 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 uh, I took it was not that great, but a couple of times you take it and you're present, right? It brings you present. Mm -hmm. So I might be sitting and I'm going, turn this, man. Your beard is mad. You know what I mean? Look at his clothes and stuff, right? And we might end up having, you know, having this like, you know, connection about anything right which i think you can have without well i know you can have without taking drugs but fundamentally you take drugs or you'll see water and water's really amazing and i'm not i'm not over anybody that's taking um the drug will understand i'm not going mad and you go all freaky but sometimes you're chilled you're present you you you, you detach from the mind chatter you detach from the thinking. So you're no longer thinking about your bills, your stress, your dysfunctional relationship, the pain of your past, your family, the worry of not having any money. You're not thinking about any of that. You're there. The only place where you are and it matters at this point in your life is the person you're with, the, c the company you're with, and what you're doing in that present moment. So the ecstasy for a very short time, and it doesn't always work, but for a very short time, takes you to the present moment. Okay, this is great, this is great, this is so true. And the ecstasy takes you to that present moment for however many hours that you're on it. The alcohol takes you there, the whole experience, it's great. Then you come home, you end up get, feeling a bit run down, a bit tired. The majority of the times, you know, you sit up to early hours in the morning, you then wake up the next day, you might have a headache, you might not, you're on come down. Predominantly come down can, can happen depending on the person for one day to three days to five days, okay? And then, at that point, you're back to reality. You're back to a reality of fundamentally, and everybody can admit it to this, is that fundamentally you're not that happy, right? Because you're doing a job that maybe you don't like. You're not necessarily following your burning amb ambition or burning desire or the feelings within you. Your, fa your, your girlfriend, the communication with your girlfriend or your partner, male or female, might not be that good. Your body starts to feel a little bit drained internally, and your organs and your arteries and everything's taking a bit of a, a bit of a, uh, you know, bit of a battering. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you're like, well, you know what? I can take it again next weekend, and that might get me back there. 
Yeah. Right, so my point being is that is not love. But it, it can't be well, love. Even but, if but what I'm saying is it might be love to that person at that particular time. I didn't say it was love of self. No, for sure. Love of self, something can be really different. We're talking about the word love and people's association with it. If you're talking about love of self, what you said before, I totally agree. It isn't a love of self because you're abusing your body, you're putting chemicals in it, it's having a detrimental effect to your body. Yeah. Love of self is quite different to what is love and how people think. Love of self no. comes to okay. all the things that you were talking about in terms of, yes, yeah, so my fibres and stuff like that. I love myself, I love being in myself. It could be they love not being themselves or being out of themselves because they detest or they don't like they, they're in not like with themselves being in their normal state. Therefore, if I don't like it, how can I get out of it so I can experience what must feel like not to be in a state where I don't like my situation or don't like myself. So there, you know, it's, 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 it comes to back to what you said at the beginning, it's misguided love. It's using love in the wrong context and the wrong word, but then not having any other way or the language to express what you feel because it's something that you don't, you may maybe even not know what love is. So it's like, how can I express something that I don't know? Okay, this feels great. Maybe this is love. Maybe I love doing this because I don't know what love is or I haven't experienced it, you know, or, I mean, you've also mentioned about um, someone, how can someone beat someone and say they love them? Yes, in my mind, that's distorted. That isn't right. But then I've done some work with, um, and years ago, in domestic violence and women who've been battered and stuff like that. And it was kind of really interesting, you know? It's like, you actually find this is learnt behaviour. Yeah. So in what context... Cycles. Yes, in what context was it learnt? Pain. <laughs> the, the guy... Well, when he grew up, his dad used to beat his mum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And his mum used to go, used to see batten and bruise and they used to make up and stuff like that. The woman, when she was younger, she used to see her dad beat her mum and thought, well, that's how naturally yeah. relationships are. Yeah. That's how it goes. Yeah. That's just the cycle. Yeah. It's terrible, but he, he loves me. He does it because he doesn't understand. Yeah. So it's actually, and then the hardest thing for these people, and it's women we're dealing with because it's like a refuge centre, but the hardest thing was actually them realising that actually it isn't right. It isn't the right way. Because as far as they're concerned, that was normal. That was normal to them. That was normal life. That's how men and women um, interacted and reacted. And because they distortedly loved each other so much, he was willing to do that and she was willing to accept it. Or, then again, the other scenarios were people, you know, might have been beaten by their husband, so they beat their children. Mm. So it was a, a continual cycle. Why? Yeah, yeah. Because that's what happened when they were younger, you know. Dad used to take it out on mum, mum used to take it out on us. I'm all right. I'm an adult. I'm still alive. Yeah. So it's like, so their notion of what love is, I mean, it, it takes, a, well, well, it takes no, okay. knowledge so, yeah. and it takes kind of people to show you that it's not right and for you to realise that actually, no, this is not, this is distorted, this is actually the wrong thing. And that actually takes a lot of courage for someone to admit that actually what I've grown up, what I've learned through my whole yeah. life is actually completely wrong. Yeah, totally. And there is another way. So th that's why the whole idea of love is so complex. And I think to for certain people, um, Certain people are in environments where they're in love. You know, they, they, they might necessarily love their fibre and stuff. They might drink a bit too much now and again. But they're in a loving environment. And lo you know, so, so, so it's like they're, they're doing those things and that environment is of love. Yeah, they still have the issues as people do. But again, yeah, no, and that's a, a, great, a great point. And, and just, just to add here as well is that the, the love is so broad. Yeah, if love encapsulates everything, it's so broad. And people listening to this will go, you know, no, I've experienced love. So I can only, I can only share my experience. So, you know, I've, I've been in dysfunctional relationships. I've seen uh, my mum get uh, beaten up in dysfunctional rela relationships when I was younger. I've been a criminal. Um, I've been in dysfunctional um, society, um, um, uh, communities and I've seen a lot of pain. My point being is that however hard it is to deal with it, these people are not in love in any stretch of their imagination, and nor was I. They're in fear. So yeah. some, yeah. Pe some people have said yeah. that there's two, you know, and you might have read this yourself, but a lot of people say that in life there's, there's two things, yin or yang, love or fear, and you're either in one or the other. I've also heard, and, and, and you may have heard this as well, is that fear is an illusion. 
okay? Mm. And once you confront fear and you, you go through it, then there is no, no more fear. So I've questioned myself whether if fear is an illusion, is love an illusion? Right, because if you can go through fear and you can confront fear and it's not really there, but it's our own, as I said earlier, our judgments, expectations and conditions on ourselves, then, then, then by, by overcoming them, then fear doesn't exist, okay? And I know that there's many different levels to that if you're, in, you know, if you're being um, uh, mentally abused, physically abused, you know, it, on whatever level from a child upwards. I'm not saying that overnight you go, oh yeah, it's okay, because I know that I've got judgments, expectations and conditions, so I've, I've, I've realised that I'm no longer being abused. Man, I'm not saying it's easy. But just to, just to bring that in is that what I think the hardest thing for us to do as human beings is first exactly what you said, find that, that self-love, which is, I, I'm saying, is the pure love, connecting with the, with the essence of who we are, just using the word love now, you know, because we're, we're human beings and we need words, right, to, 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 to la label it, call it, you know, many people but, but call it different things. But more importantly, love is a powerful thing. A, a very just, powerful. Not just a powerful word. But fear is too. Is, fear is very powerful. Yeah, very powerful. But the, the other side is, you know, this, it's about opposites. Yep. You need opposites in order to understand and appreciate one against the other. Yeah. Hot and cold. Yeah. You know, dark and light. Yeah. You know? Definitely. You know, pleasure and pain. Yeah. You know, if there wasn't pain, you wouldn't comprehend what pleasure was because it's like the opposites enable each other to kind of live. Yeah. There's different paths, you know, putting on this thing, got love and fear. You know, two, two opposites. But, okay, and that's so true. But also, love has no opposite. So if love has no opposite, and love is everything, right? I.e. fear doesn't exist. Go with me here, right? <laughs> so fear doesn't exist, it's an illusion. Because that's what, that's what a lot of philosophers are saying, that's what a lot of people are saying, yeah? Whether you follow the spiritual realm or whatever, whatever you're interested in, is that a lot of people say that fear is an illusion, it's self-created uh, in our mind, okay? So what I'm exploring is, well, if, if that's created in our mind and we can go through it, yeah? We can, we, we, can, we can dissipate it, it's not there, it doesn't exist, it's a figment of our imagination, and love is everything, there is no opposite, then, and you're saying we need the pain to know the love, but I'm saying that... No, I didn't say we need the pain. I think everything exists with opposites. Yes, yeah, yeah. So it's about not needing it, but without it, you wouldn't know. You know, it's like, um, I think I've heard Deepak Chopra say, it's like a man suffering from blindness will never understand the meaning of light because he's never experienced it. Yeah. You know, so without the opposites, you don't have a context. You, you, you know, you, I use fear as the opposite of love because you said that no, earlier. No, for sure. However, it's like... If there was no opposite of love, how could you understand or appreciate what it was? Yeah. Because most people are, a lot of people are in the opposite of whatever it is, yeah. whatever you want to put on it. Yeah. Therefore, we're able to say, well, by having it, it means this, it means that. Yeah. It means that because there was something, if there was nothing to equate it with, then but, it, but, it, it, it would just be yeah. in the air. Yeah, it, yeah. it could be something where it was like, this is what is so important. This is a foundation where I can build things on. And this means so much to me because there's nothing to compare it with without it. So, you know, if you don't have, you know, we're talking about, you know, we're talking about people who might not have love for self. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, if, yeah, for sure. If there wasn't the opposite, and as you say, you will use love of self there. Yeah. Yeah. People who had love of self, we have nothing to compare it with. Totally. And you don't necessarily, when I say comparing it, you don't need to necessarily experience no, 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 totally. the opposite yeah. in order to compare it. Yeah, of know? course. Because you can see it in, in society or other things. Oh, that, that is, oh, I, I understand now because that's that. Oh, that makes sense to me. Yeah, because obviously, again, yeah, is, is if, I, if I'm saying that now um, um, I've connected to this, this new feeling, okay, this mm. feeling of um, un unconditional love, then like, you, you're exactly right. I need to have, have seen the pain, felt the pain, experienced the pain, experienced the dysfunction to know what function is, mm. right? Ex you know, experience the pain mm. to know that, well, actually, that didn't serve me. Mm. So that, that, that's so true. So, so, so do we have to go through the pain, the dysfunction, because so many go through that and never experience love, mm -hmm. okay? On, on, 
in any interpretation of what love is, because there's many different interpretations of love that we're that I'm that I'm realizing more and more, right? So, do yeah, do we have to go through the pain, the dysfunction, or see it on one level? So do so for example, and I just go broader as well. So we, you know, we're saying we, we're saying that a lot of people don't have that self-love would you agree a lot of people don't have self-love now i haven't asked you if you have at the moment but in general no no, a lot of people don't don't have self-love right yeah Yeah? would you agree with that because of whatever reasons you know like you said earlier our upbringing our childhood our parents you know their their fear of us not doing well which sometimes takes away our uh, our love Mm -hmm. you know because they want you to do well but there's too much pressure to, to do well in this world so that disconnects us so so now take it broader war famine um you know the fact that you know a lot of our actions in the west create a lot of the problems in the in in the rest of the world Mm -hmm. okay and those actions people will justify and say well you know I love, you know, I'm doing what I need to do to survive and, you know, I've got to get by and so on, yeah, not, with no concern on, 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 a, on, a, on a more cosmic universal level, okay, mm-hmm. which is fine because our, our, our thinking hasn't expanded that far yet, mm-hmm. okay, so we're only concerned about ourselves mm-hmm. a lot of the times, but w- w- I might be getting lost here, but pull me back if I am, is that what I'm noticing is that the way we view the world at the moment and everything you're saying is totally on point and you could end up getting in a conversation like this. This is like one of them conversations that when you start going, well, who called soap soap? I don't know if you've ever been in one of them. It's like, well, why is, why is wood called wood? And, you know, you know, it's not one of those. What, what I'm trying to really, you know, get, get my head around is that the way it is at the moment, the way our society is at the moment, the way we even think ourselves and the way that we even see things ourselves and the way that we even feel that we need to experience things ourselves is very, is built on a, on a foundation of fear, okay? Yeah. Okay, it's a built on a foundation of fear. So we're just coming back to the fear and love here. Mm-hmm. So on one level you could say, well, okay, well, I've needed to see that in order to now know what maybe a foundation of love would be, just to, again, use these things, because I don't fully know what love is in general, you know, it's, I think, I do, it feels, it feels good to say love is everything, Mm -hmm. yeah, and it feels amazing to say love has no opposite, Mm -hmm. because it really seems for me to strip away all this, you know, labelling and and, and what love should be, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, well, if love is everything, then great, so, so at the moment, somebody might say, well, fear is everything because fear has created everything at the moment. Mm-hmm. So I suppose where, where, where I'm exploring is that having this, having this sort of inner feeling and, and this sort of almost realisation that, that, that love is everything and that we are love and that we're born into love, yeah, and that, you know, we're a living, breathing organism which is, which is, which is you know, full of mystery, wonder and the unknown, mm-hmm. completely the unfathomable, unfathom- yeah, mm-hmm. And yet we we have all this fear, pain, famine, anger, resentment, negativity, frustration, um, anxiety. You know, and the list is endless. Mm-hmm. I honestly believe if you connect to yourself, that doesn't exist. I agree with you. Yeah, no, I know, I, I, no, I, mean, I know you I do. Mean, I mean, not, no, not in disagreement. Yeah, it is. So, 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 so my but point being is, how can we? How can if that doesn't exist in this point? Could it be possible that you don't have to go through that or see that to experience it to be a living creature? Well... Do you know what I mean? I know and yes. Um, I'm going to talk now and it might make, not make any sense. To <laughs> um, but, I mean, it's like if we kind of... Um, if we look at what happened 10 years ago with the 9-11... Yes. And, you know, shocking things. There's lots of different views on it, whether it happened or whether it was conspiracy or whatever. However, it was kind of interesting because at that time, you know, it was interesting watching the news, watching Newsnight. And after about a week or so of it going on, I says, I was reading something else. And it said, um, what you surround your life with and what you experience 
becomes part of your life. Yeah, definitely. So I read this and I kind of reasoned and thought about it for a while. I thought, wow, that's kind of really deep. You know what? I'm going to stop reading newspapers and stop watching the news. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, made, you made that decision at that point. Um, I pretty much have been, this is what, over 10 years. I don't yeah. read newspapers, you know. Yeah. So look, I, I don't. I, that's not fully true because I do sometimes read the sports pages, but I've stopped doing that even. Yeah. And um, I don't watch the news because I'm actually not interested. Do you know why? Because it was about peddling fear. Yes, and totally. In order totally. for the powers that be to control people, you make them fearful. You know, and every you know, it's even being documented about you know certain things that happened in the world wars and stuff, and large companies that were involved, and really, it's about control. You know, and I think it's okay. about controlling of us as individuals, because if we're controlled, we're kind of weak and useless, and if we we don't explore what we're able to do as individuals, how powerful we really are. Um, then that helps those who are in power. What is kind of scary is when people start exploring, well, actually, I'm quite powerful just as a person within. And if lots of like-minded people of a similar wavelength get Definitely. together, that's a real power for change. So it, fear is about control. Yeah. And keeping the status quo. And keeping everything suppressed. And keeping everything suppressed. So yeah. fear could be anything, you know, your fear of trying to pay your rent. Yeah. So that simple thing is, well, if I can't pay my rent, I don't have a roof over my head. If I don't have a roof over my head, I'm going to be on the street. Well, it's not da it's dangerous on the street. I don't want to be on the street, you know. I, oh, I've got to work in my job and I kind of completely hate it because if I don't work on the job, I can't pay my rent. Fear, 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 fear. But everything's kind of, everything's kind of built on fear. And, you know, we have our own bouts of it myself as well you know yeah. it's kind of you go through it you know and even talking about dealing with things that you should or shouldn't be fearful of or loving this or that you know it takes um works the wrong word i'd say i'd say it takes um continual focus and effort yeah awareness it. But, it, it, but but you can't have that focus you can't have that focus and effort i suppose if you don't know you know, it's not an expectation of a result, but you know, do you see what I mean? It's it's almost like nobody knows. Would you agree with this? Nobody knows that that's available. We're not able to. We're not able to break that fear. I feel that we're just living in it. I think yeah. I think we are. And uh, however, you know, I think there's um, I think there's a lot of people who are seeing things kind of differently and they're having a slightly different approach. And it's not new. People have been doing it for many many years. And actually, a lot of things that people are reading or getting information on now they're, they're thousands of years old it's exactly, not new exactly. it's not new people are realizing well, wow you know th these people knew what they're talking about it makes a lot of sense yeah. you know wow when I mean, you go back but these are again only certain people and i, I, th I think it's kind of i think the i'm changing subject no, that's fine that's fine but i think the challenge for communicators who are interested in connecting with other people is finding palatable ways with it with which to connect with normal people who feel they're not interested in that but deep down they are so you, we can look at music and we can see how powerful music is and a lot of music I'm not into because I think it's talking a load of crap and but you see from that power the effect it can have on individuals young people and society so it's just showing you what you want to feed people has a, can have a real powerful effect. You know, when you're peddling fear, you know, about these people who could be the enemies, then people start not trusting the person walking down the road. So suddenly your whole approach comes from, you know, against the, um, the what's the, the criminal, criminal system? You know, you're innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. They want us to say everyone's guilty on their, until they can prove they're innocent. So it comes to the freedom of information and you know, people saying, you know, the re recent guy, I think it was Schmidt, who's one of the top guys at Google, is like, if you're not, if, you, if, you, if you've got nothing to hide, why are you afraid? That isn't the question. The no, question is, question you should be in control as to what you want people to know about you. It's not about, if I've got something to hide, I shouldn't be afraid if people know my business. And really, that's just large companies or people just wanting you to feel that if I'm not telling you my business, then maybe I have got something to hide. What have I got to hide? Why do I, why do I, 
and really they just want information on you so they can control you yeah totally okay yeah so that, that so okay so there 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 you've described part of society okay so we've moved into a fear based society okay so so bringing bringing that again bringing that back to um the, the the flip side of bringing that back to love is that i suppose people all of us i feel that because of that fear that we've been that we that, that we've we've grown out of our generations yeah and, and generations before us because like you said go back thousands of years and there's much text and people talking about love and 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 and, and, and so on and i don't know if i genuinely don't know and haven't researched enough if there's you know if there was civilizations which were all harmonious and and happy and everything was great and everybody got along and and so on i just don't know i mean i know people have talking about certain tribes and certain you know certain um, um tribes of the past and really had that connection to the land haven't they whether it be the indians and and different different um tribes all over in 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 australia and so on have had that real connection to uh, to nature where you know they they love them they, they love themselves they respect nature they give back to the land and the land gives to them and it's like a cycle correct but we've that's gone out of this so far out of this day and age. a lot of people are putting good stuff back but that's gone so that sort of almost love and respect because again love comes under the bracket of respect and and and, and you know sustainability and 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 giving back and so on it doesn't it you, you know if if you if you love something you don't want to keep taking from it, do you? No. Do you see what I mean? If you, if you, you really, if you really love, respect, cherish somebody, you don't want to keep taking from them, do you? Mm -hmm. So it, it comes back to that whole in society, we we don't know we don't know how else to function. There's no true communication, like you said. There's no transparency. Not transparency where you've got to tell, like you said, tell somebody you don't know, tell a corporation or a system that you don't know who's organising it, who's functioning it and, and what's happening. Tell them the ins and outs of a duck's butt. Do you, you know, isn't it? You know, oh, oh, who's this? Oh, I've got to give this person something. I've got to give that person something and pay that. And I've got to, got to stick to this. And, and oh, and that guy's now controlled in our country. And he's told me I've got to do that because that's helping out that. Okay, I've got to do that as well. Uh, why, why am I doing all those things? Do you see what I mean? And like you said, you're then indoctrinated into this world of fear. So coming back to my point and, and, and sort of trying to bring it, bring it around again to that whole um, love, love is everything, love has no opposite. We can't fathom. Not, I don't think anybody knows what a world, what this world would be like if everybody connected to themselves. And connecting to love like and I can't I can't actually I've tried doing this I've tried doing this in conversations I've tried to um, explain to people how I'm feeling and I don't know if you've ever tried to do that whatever the feeling you know if you, you love film imagine you're behind the camera and you're doing it and, and then afterwards you tell somebody it's like man I was on set I was doing this thing I was doing it and we did that and, and then you know the clouds just parted at the right time and the rainbow come up and you know the DOP was there and he got the shot and it was like and you're trying to explain that to somebody and they're just like, Oh yeah, yeah, sounds sounds good. And you're like, Yeah, oh, you gotta be there, you know, it's that mm -hmm. isn't it? You know, mm -hmm. many scenarios we have like that. Mm -hmm. And I think that, you know, love is like that as well. So I just wanna say that I can't I can't tell you and I can't explain to Dennis and I'm not gonna tell somebody that they're not feeling love, you know, because I that's dangerous territory you know I'm not I'm not in any way going to start saying no you're not feeling love what I am saying is that you know it's a knowing when you're in love or fear you know what I mean is the, there's just a there's a deep knowing well, so, can I interrupt go on maybe I'll just throw it off the top of my head. Go on, throw it in. Maybe, yeah, there's a knowing when you're in deep love, but there's not necessarily knowing when you're in fear. Interesting. And that's so, where it becomes a problem, because you don't know. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, fear, that's really fear interesting. Fear is cloaked in lots of different things. Faces, different faces. Different faces. But love, so love, know. yeah, ah, oh, go on, do you want to carry on? I've no, got, no, I've no, got no, something. Come, no, it's really good, it's, it's really good. This is on the sofa conversation. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is, this is really good, because that's true, that, that might be where the, 
the illusion lies. Because, okay, there's a deep knowing of love. We know when we're being loved. Like, you know when you first meet somebody and you have that feeling, you know? And like you said, however you get there, but you have that connection. You just know if it's love, don't you? Honestly, right? And all of you, if you've had that, even if it's short-lived sometimes, that, that first time you met somebody and you think, oh, I really love this person. I know two weeks after making love to them, you've split up and it's all gone Pete, Pete Tong, but originally, originally you thought, this is the one, I love this person. And that's a real different feeling to feeling lust for someone. Yeah, exactly. That's, that we'll come to that. <laughs> right, so, so, um, cause there's well, you a- You can feel love and lust at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> but if you, yeah, yeah, okay. No, 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 don't, cause, cause I got that point. What did you say again? Bring me back. It was a, you said, People we don't fear. know about fear. Mm, f- yeah. That's so true. I've got, I've got a, if I can get this out, is fear has untold amount of faces. Untold. Fear disguises itself as love. Love, the reason why, sound like a school teacher, love, <laughs> Love, uh, sorry, sorry, I just uh, heard myself uh, uh, just there saying that. So love, taking on board the has no opposite, is that deep knowing one feeling and when you feel it, you're like, yes, I feel connected to this source of love. With fear, you're so right. There's no knowing and we can't see it, it's, it's almost, in, it, it's invisible and it is an illusion and the reason it's an illusion is because it's, it's masked as somebody that says, I love you, Dennis, you know, you know, I really love you, I love you, smack, smack, no, but I love you, some flowers, mm. the, the flowers mean love, mm. don't they, so I love you, or, or for example, it's cloaked as sabotage, isn't it, or self-sabotage, self-sabotage. I mean, I think some of the most destructive things we all do and we all have to work with is with the self. Yeah. It's not about other people. Yeah. You know, it could be, you know, and again, put myself in the whole category, you know, it's certain things like, maybe I need to know more to do something. Maybe I just need to get a bit more information. Yeah. Oh, I don't, I'm not good enough. Or yeah. maybe I don't know enough. Or, yeah. There's too many people out there who know too much already. What have I got to offer? Yeah. So we do this all the time. Totally. It's like, mm, maybe mm, I'm not intelligent enough. Oh, I've never been good at that. We do this all the time. Yeah. You know, we do this all the time, you know. And sometimes you have to look at someone who's in your eyes is or society's eyes is successful and you might think, Well, what's the difference between them and me? Um, I, I can do what they're doing, I think I'm better. And I think it's actually confidence, you know? But confidence would be confidence would be an emotion an emotion and action of love. Right? Well, well, no. Because it would no. Because it wouldn't. Confidence, fear, confidence doesn't uh, come from uh, uh, um, come out of fear. Do you see what I mean? No, it doesn't. But I mean, when I say confidence, I mean I'm slightly going a, a tangent from love. Yeah, go but, on. I mean, you know, stop going away from love. Someone, <laughs> but, but no, no, it's good. I'm our joking. whole life's encompassed. Yeah, of course. So, but you know, but I'm saying something like confidence. I mean, let's take it there we might not feel as confident as we should do because maybe we don't think we're good enough. Yeah. Someone else could feel that I'm good enough, I'm better. You know, they might not be necessarily nice personally. It doesn't mean that they love, but they have a confidence within what their abilities are, even if it's full of crap and they persuade other people and they can't deliver. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean love, but the reason why you might not be confident is because you can love yourself more. Well, yeah, and that, that, that brings me to something that just popped into my mind. Because as you, as you see, we flow. We, if you listen to this... This is think, on the Simon Sofa yeah, flow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is like, you're probably thinking... Oh, you know, Where will it go? No one knows. Exactly. And that's the fun of it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You, you, said it, you said it for me. So, um, so taking, taking, taking that on board is, is very true. Because, for example, I was quite confident. Uh, person when I was younger um, but I had a lot of ego confidence mm-hmm. okay ego confidence the ego the ego's identity is pain and suffering the ego um, if you if you've done any reading or you've, you you've looked at you know you have your own idea when I say to people that's ego people instantly step back and go I'm not being egotistical and it's like Ego and egotistical are different things. Ego is another word to, de- to, to, to describe 
uh, a being that we can that we are that, that almost an energy that resides within us yeah so when you say ego it might be an action that you've made or an energy that is in within you that comes out at certain points and it normally comes out like what Dennis said a minute ago at points of fear points when we feel attacked points when we feel inadequate points when we feel low low self-esteem depressed you know our ego wants us in these negative places mm. but and this is why it's so beautiful that, that you brought up about the many faces of, of, of fear, the many faces of fear, ego, pain. Encapsulate those three together. Okay, so the many faces means that, that when I was young, I was confident. You know, I, I walk around with a bit of a swagger. I thought I was, you know, 40 before my time. And, um, you know, was I coming, because I was confident and I was coming from, you know, in my mind doing well, but I was stealing from people, right? So, you know, was I, was, was, was that love? I was more confident than other people, you know, I got on with more people, it seemed I had lots of friends, but some people might meet me and go, yeah, he's a real nice guy. I'm sure, sure people thought, yeah, he's a real nice guy. And I thought I was a nice guy, mm. right? I, I didn't think I was a bad person. Mm. I was stealing from people. It's causing a hell of a lot of pain for people. Mm. I was, I was uh, driving illegally. I was drink driving. Mm. Um, you know, I was a nice person though, Dennis. Mm. Do you see where I'm coming from? So there's a, also just bringing in that confidence as well can also be another face of the ego, which is actually my fear, my fear of not having anything, my fear of not having money, my fear of not being liked, yeah? My fear of growing up in, 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 a, in an estate in a world where um, you know, you, you was constantly in this ego um, uh, fight for betterment, mm -hmm. yeah? Fight to be somebody. Recognition. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I mean? Was I a bad, you know, do you see where I'm coming from with that? Was, was, I, was I a bad person? What do you think? Well, Maybe you can decide Well, I, I, I think that I wasn't a nice person. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think I was a nice person. And I definitely don't think, although I loved myself, I didn't love myself. Okay. Do you, do you see what I mean? I'd walk down the road and I'd do what probably most of you do, you know, nice pair of clothes on, you know, feeling good, going out, looking good, looking in the mirrors as I walk past. But, but maybe... And go, yeah, yeah, I but, look good. But maybe one thing, it's interesting, you said, you, although you loved yourself, you didn't, what did you say? Although I loved myself, I... I loved myself egoically, but I didn't love myself because I was in fear. But exactly. Yeah. You know, so it's like, comes back to what you said, you thought you loved yourself yeah. and by doing these things this gave you the feeling the recognition of what love meant the and idea is, and the idea of love yes. to you it's only well, and, and I thought I was getting it sorry yeah. to cut you short I thought I was getting from it from other people, people because yeah. you had all the trappings yeah it's only you deciding probably from your own volition from meeting people from not meeting people from meeting people that could be the very opposite that made you question yourself yeah, totally. And you could have easily just continued living that life and that lifestyle. And people are. And yeah, and ignoring your inner self. Yeah, totally. And having that dialogue with your inner self. Totally. As we know many people are. You didn't. You says, well, actually, you started questioning yourself. You yeah. thought, well, actually, you know what? I want to change for me. Yeah. It's not for anyone. It's not there because if I change for me, it means I feel better. I want to explore certain things. I want to understand, okay, yeah, I was, you know, Jack the Lad. I used to have loads of mates, you know, whatever I wanted I had. But, you know, I'm being honest to myself. And I think the hardest thing for all of us is to be honest to ourselves. Actually, I don't really like myself. Yeah. That, well, with a that, feeling that, went as well. That, that takes a lot of guts. Yeah. It takes a lot of guts and courage to kind of have that inner dialogue with yourself and they went, mm, actually, you know what? You know... I want to change to be the person I want to be inside yeah. because I'm not being that person. So that person, that's great. So that person inside, mm -hmm. call it a person because mm -hmm. it's not really a person, but no, it's person, a feeling. No, spirit, it's feel, no, yeah, whatever. okay, spirit. So let's say it's spirit. Mm. Is that love? Could we define that as love? Because do, do you have two, you have like two entities in you, yeah? We're not cracking up. We're not mad, okay? <laughs> I have loads right. of entities. <laughs> <laughs> You're not just one person, <laughs> goddammit. <laughs> um, but 
everyone talks about the voices. So this brings me to, let's talk about the voices. The voices within us, yeah, okay? So, like you said, is that while we're numb, while we're in fear, while we're unconscious, I'm walking, or use me for example, yeah? So I'm walking around like a, uh, you know, like a Jack the Lad and, and um, um, I didn't have everything I wanted, but, you know, thinking that, you know, I was doing, I was doing good and, you know, people liked me and, you know, uh, people wanted to be with me and stuff like that, right? So I had this whole ego entity within me. Mm-hmm. And at that time, I wasn't questioning. There, it almost was as if love must have been in there. And I'm using love as the, 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 the yin and yang, the, the, the saint, the, the devil, whichever way you want to look at it. But love was, uh, love was obviously in me because I was born. I'm born into love. It must have been in me. It didn't just appear, did it? I didn't just, I didn't just read, a, read something or, or meet one person and then love appeared. It, mm-hmm. it must have always been there, right? Mm-hmm. But it wasn't almost communicating to me. Mm-hmm. Right? It's almost like the voice hadn't woken up, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, although at some... At, no, I probably lie. I was probably a, not a lie, but that's probably maybe not true. Maybe it was there, but fear was so powerful that it just kept it. It kept it down because I was just thinking there was a few times when I was trying to be someone else, but I actually thought that that person would not be liked. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't love thinking that. No. That was fear going. The next face of fear going. Hm, you can't do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody, nobody's going to like you. You won't have anything. You know. You got. You know. You're not going to survive. Mm-hmm. So. As that voice started to come out, and, and, and this, is, uh, this is great in relation to, to the whole love, is that, say for example, um, my, my love self started to communicate. It didn't communicate strongly. It didn't, it didn't connect me instantly to love. This has been a process. Mm. You know, I was still doing not necessarily good things, but I was trying to do better things. I was trying to better myself. I was, I was thinking, how can I break out of this? You know, and follow, trying to follow in my true feelings, following my instinct, and, and, and are going against the wind big time, mm-hmm. right? To try and, you know, access this, um, what you said, this spirit or this purity or this voice that was just saying that there's another way to feel. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? Mm. And, and I think that, that is what's in, within us all. Mm. Would, would you, would, do you know what I mean by that? Would you, would you believe, would you, would you, do you believe that? As just you as an individual? I, well, I believe each individual has the same power as any other individual. Yeah. And, you know, so it can achieve greatness or the opposite of that. Just as much as the next person, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, so it's like, you know, I think all, whatever walks of life, wherever you come from, we all have this within us. Uh, and we all have our certain kind of um, skills or qualities or maybe reasons why we're here, you know. The question is, are we just here? Are we here for a reason? Yeah. You know, if, if we don't realise a reason, do, you know, do we just die? Do we come back and relive the same life again until yeah. we get to understand yeah. why we're here to get to the next level? Yeah. It's really interesting what you were just saying there because... Um, Something that I read the other day, I have these little cards that I have and, you know, guides me. And I can't remember exactly, um, but it really said is, I can't remember, it's something about learn and grow from the inside out. Okay, beautiful. So let's flip it on the other side. Yeah. Maybe the misguided love is the outside in yes. and there's the misguidance beautiful so it's beautiful. From the inside so, out so we so we've tried we've tried to access it out here mm-hmm. haven't we yeah. and and everybody that speaks of love is it's it's i've got to get somewhere as well isn't it mm-hmm. you know when i'm when i've made 10 films i'm I, I will love myself or you know if i go to the gym now for the next 20 weeks i will love myself you know um you know, it's all exterior. If I get the, the, the job, I love myself. If I get the million pound, I will love myself. Um, if I get the million pound, I'll have the freedom to start doing things for myself, which will make me love myself. Mm-hmm. But I need to continue to do the painful things to myself, live in the fear, in order to get the money to allow me to do the things I'm doing to love myself. It's completely the wrong way around. It's definitely, go within or go without is another saying that uh, I've, you might have heard. Okay. Yeah? Mm. Go within or go without. We're not told that. No. Nobody's told anybody. 
in school, in parenting, and even if even if you read some spiritual books, they say that this has been around for two two thousand years or or even more. But where did it get lost? Where did the fear come in? And where did the love get lost so that nobody was taught about real love? In fact, the love of things become more interesting than the love of self, wouldn't you say? Mm-hmm. Do you agree with that? Mm. And where did the, the fear of so-called, uh, sorry, where did the love that was so, so-called uh, alive disappear to? And, and uh, the other question I ask myself is maybe the true deep love that I'm talking about is actually not ever, not ever been prominent at any point, yeah? We've, been, we've had dabbles of it, we've had experience of it. I mean, Shakespeare, you know, many great poets, many great playwrights, I mean, just, you know, many great people on this planet have existed and, and shared love, you know? Jesus and a number of different people, you know, in the Bible. And, and um, you know, there is a lot of people, sh- you know, you could say Malcolm X, you could say, you know, you could say a lot of people come from that base of love trying to make change and, and create a more of a harmonious um, um, reality, mm-hmm. but they've all been chopped down by fear. I mean, mm-hmm. most, most people have been assassinated, you know, if they're trying to make some sort of, you know, wouldn't you agree? Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, every time fear's chopped it down. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the question is, is maybe, and this is another thing, I know there's so many questions when you come, when you come onto the sofa, but maybe we are evolving into um, our love self. Maybe we are starting to wake up to the exterior fears and exterior pains that, are, that have been governing us and controlling us. And it maybe, we, you know, this next decade really is about uh, some of the things that I've been, um, um, you know, reading, exploring and seeing in myself. Because one thing I will say um, is that in the short time I've been here, I've seen so much pain and I've experienced a lot of pain. Um, not, not as much as some and, you know, and, you know, again, there's no levels. Pain is pain, right? Yeah, yeah. Fear is fear. There's not like a Richter scale. Okay. Well, actually... I've uh, had more pain than you. <laughs> actually, you, you don't know what pain is. <laughs> your pain's two notches short of mine, man. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, pain doesn't know. Fear doesn't know. Fear doesn't go, well, you know what? I'm going to give Dennis just that little bit more fear today than Simon. You know... It, the point is, is that we label it and try to judge it and understand it and say that your fear is worse than I. It's not. Fear's fear, pain's pain, right? You know, end of, and it's a feeling. Love is 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 a feeling, and that feeling of love is lost because if it wasn't lost, you wouldn't see what's going on in this world today as it is. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. It wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't be how it is. We wouldn't all be running around scared. Uh, anxious, depressed, uh, killing ourselves, e- eating ourselves to death, s- uh, draining the planet of its uh, of its um, resources. We wouldn't. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so you know. So yeah. So wh- I think the, me- the if anything the what I've got from this town. You please do. Uh, we all you know summarize if I feel we sort of come to that point because in the sense of. Self-love is going within, yeah? Um, And really knowing who you are, knowing what makes you tick, really being honest to yourself about, you know, how you're acting, what fears you have, what actions you're really taking that are actually causing you the problems that you may or may not have because the problems that you have are self-created would you would you agree with that Hmm. yeah do you see what i mean like we like to point the finger don't Mm -hmm. we we like to say well no my mum and my mum my mum had no money when she was younger so Mm. that you know i i I have to be like this or my dad abused me Mm. you know or you know the the council the council estate i grew up in was 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 a hard to deal with Mm. the, the, the list is the mm. list is endless okay mm. so we try to we try to blame another face of the fear <laughs> mm. yeah because fear is blame mm. okay and we try to we try to it all costs the ego and fear needs to keep us suppressed as as Dennis said earlier it's in society whether it's the powers that be it's the systems to because because it's the systems of try could you imagine Honestly, 
digressing now, but, but uh, another question. How would you create, sorry, how would you control 6.5 billion people, yeah, or depend on, you know, bring the millions down because I know you wouldn't control them all. But you're, 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 you're in this world at some point and all these people are growing and for some reason you find yourself in a position that you need to control these people, right? Mm -hmm. You're not going to give them, you know, uh, the ability to know who they are and the, how amazing they are and how advanced they can be and, and, and to progress. You're going to think, well, I need to keep these guys down. I need to keep these people suppressed. We need to create fear and we need to create, how do we keep these people numb? Well, let's get them addicted to tobacco. Let's get them addicted to alcohol. Let's get them addri addicted to narcotics and, and man-made drugs. Mm. Let's get them addicted to dysfunctional relationships. Let's mm. get them addicted to dysfunction. Let's get them addicted to newspapers and television and you know every other negative thing that happens. Let's not let them see that they, they're, they're, they're the essence of creation and the same, same makeup as the planet. Let's not get them to see that they've got psychic ability and healing capacities. Mm. And let's not make them understand their body and that how it works and how it functions and that they, they, they are more, you know, more able than a computer to, to transmute energy and, 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 and transmute information and, mm. and transform it. Do you see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. What do you think to that? How else, how else would you, how else would you, you could control them with love. That's a massive question. I was, <laughs> that's another talk. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's another it's talk. 6.5, I mean, how... And it's interesting because it's like... It's interesting what you said because what other way could you say? You said, how would you control these people? Yeah. Because the, the other level is we need some control. And that's self-control as well. Yeah. And lots of different things. And it's like, well, how would you control it? And I, I don't know. No. So it's being a... But I also look back that a lot of the control in terms of powers that be actually started because a lot of the churches had a lot of the power and this hidden knowledge and they wanted to hide it from the masses. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you know, they created their own kind of societies and worlds Cults. within that. Yeah. You know, to keep that knowledge away from the regular people so they could... Um, help facilitate or build their world yeah or their environment you know yeah. so, so I, I think this so it was a power thing so you're saying that fundamentally to so say for example me and you have got this and we we, we create that this is really powerful mm -hmm. and we, we we withhold that we create a, we create a, a need for other people but we also have we have a control over them a power over them yeah yeah even though this could be completely nothing a piece of plastic we've created that yeah or, or even even if if you gave that to other people, it wouldn't have a diverse effect on you, adverse sorry effect on you, and could be beneficial, because again that could be fear. You know, I have this power or this knowledge. I'm fearful that if I give it to you, I don't know what you might do yeah, with it. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you might use that power against me. Yeah. Therefore, and if if I withhold that knowledge and information from you acting from fear yeah yeah you live in a world of fear because you don't know that this if you knew this information it could take you out how you feel yeah but suddenly that power balance has shifted yeah i don't have more information or knowledge than you therefore i don't feel i'm higher up the ladder than you and that we could be equals you could even surpass me yeah but then that's so 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 even how amazing is that because one of one of the things that i've also thought is that all power derives from fear yeah. Right. Every single piece of power derives from fear, whether it's power over your your parents, power over your children, power over a country, power over you know whatever. Corporations want power. Everything's about power, but it's all exactly what Dennis has just said. It's all about fear. So it's funny, and, and is that people know love, love has no fear whatsoever. And you know what? When you're vibrating in love. You want the next person to enhance, supersede you, grow. Mm. You, you, you want to nurture them and, 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 and allow them to, you know, to manifest all possibility and to even, whilst doing that, you know, pro probably grow yourself because it's like in a film. Oh, no, let's talk about football. We both love football. 
No, because we, 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 in the sense of use football, ha- just as an example, mm. you, you played Sunday football before? Like just Sunday league? Have you played like league football? Yeah. Okay, so. Saturday league. Saturday league, okay, so I played All a little. Okay, you're better than me. <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no, no. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> no I, played, I played a little Saturday, I used to play, I used Sunday, to play when Sunday. I was younger. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, right. no, so <laughs> ha- ha- why does it always happen, right? I'm not, I'm not digressing here. Why mm. does it always happen? You're a great team, yeah? The underdogs come. Everybody that knows sport knows this. The underdogs come and the underdogs play the best they've ever played. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Is it, would you agree with that? Have you seen that? Have you had yeah. that? Yeah, definitely. Right? And all of a sudden, the underdogs have risen from that beautiful... Okay, you could say that... You could say that they, they don't want to lose and the fear of losing makes them perform better. You could use that analogy, right? Definitely. But you could also say that their belief, their, their inner belief changes and their unity becomes stronger and their performance comes stronger because of this other team as well. Because mm-hmm. this other team plays better, is more supportive with each other, more harmonious, more fluid, and, and it just works. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Wouldn't mm-hmm. you agree? Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden... <laughs> few moves start coming off, everyone's a bit like, man, Dennis don't normally play like that, but I'll go with it. You know, if Dennis is up in his game, I like my game. Yeah, and, and, and all of a sudden, everybody's elevated, and you've got this amazing thing, and even if they lose, everyone comes off buzzing, and they're like, guys, brilliant. It's brilliant. Mm-hmm. Enough said, we lost, but you know what? We give it our all, you know what I mean? And we mm-hmm. played really well. Mm-hmm. So, so bring that into love. If we lived in a love foundation with no fear and, and we had a loving environment, damn right you wouldn't do a job you don't like. Damn right you'd have people, whatever it is, doing art, producing, whatever it is, supporting the next person. It wouldn't be about fear. It would be about unity, love, supportiveness, sustainability, growth, enhancement, elevation. Mm. Do you see what I mean? It, it, it's, just, it's, it's mind-blowing. And it's, it's um, a guy... I went to watch a stand-up comedian last night, okay. and he was a guy, great guy, um, stand-up last night, first time I've seen him, he was in a film that I made, um, and his name's Doc Brown, and basically, we went and watched, there was two, two people before him, I think, and they were really poor, really poor stand-up comedians, and, but you know, all due respect, they're, they're growing and doing their thing, but they, they weren't very good, and I didn't like him, very generic way of doing stand-up, you know, come out, abuse a few people, talk mm. about, um, you know, talk about teaching, paedophilia, um, you know, I don't know, sex, swearing, you know, and so on. It was just generic. And then Doc Brown comes out, and he's telling this story, and he's talking about dreams and aspirations, and he's using his past experiences, uh, that, he, that he used to be a rapper, and so on. He's using his past experiences and bringing it into this comedy and told a story, then told a story about his love for David Attenborough, Attenborough and, um, and then told, done a little rap about wanting to, wishing David Attenborough was his granddad, right? You loved it, you loved it. And I was, hi- I was highly impressed by it. Haven't seen him, he's been doing, doing the circuit for a while now and, and uh, amongst other things, writing and so on. And he had this acting and, and afterwards I just, caught him for a, a, a minute with some friends and I said and I said to him no no he was just telling us and I goes you know he goes well I'm trying to do like a different style and come from you know not just come out and be like normal you know mm-hmm. do this do this pick on so on but I'm trying to be truthful and I said to him I goes what and transparent and just in. he goes yeah and also come out and entertain people and the, and I suppose my point being is that the whole crowd elevated Mm. I mean, they were clapping, really, clapping him like two or three times throughout his performance, you know, because he'd done this thing. And they really connected to him. And do you know why they connected to him? Why? Because he was being true. Mm. Uh, uh, the only reason they connected to him is because of his mm. transparency and truth. And you could see it in his performance. Mm. And you don't see that in a world of fear. You don't see people's transparency. You don't see people's truth. You don't know people. You can't know them because they're too scared to know themselves to even show you who they are, mm. you know? So, you know, it comes back to follow, you know, f- follow that, what did you say earlier? It's a beautiful analogy um, about the going within. Which one? Because <laughs> uh, I said going within, going without, but yeah, you said it. Uh, um, I can't remember exactly what I said, but it's, uh, you know, 
go from the inside out. And I think we're in a world, a society, which teaches us to go from the outside in. And therefore, that what creates all the problems. Yeah. But, you know, if we start from inside ourselves and then from that come out, that's how we can grow. That's how we can prosper and come from the right source, as it were. I think that's a good place to end. Okay, that's great. Well, this is part one. There's going to be a part two, you know. Yeah, there'll be a part two. And well, there's uh, going to be, these are going to be lots of little snippets. So you're going <laughs> to just be wowed, you know. But, you know, we're, we're coming back to a screen to you very soon. Yeah, very soon. Thanks so much for your time. And you know what? This wasn't a conversation between Simon and myself, Dennis. But you were involved. Totally. So we'd love to hear what you have to say and your thoughts and views of anything that we've discussed today. Anyway, thanks so much and thank you, Simon. Thank you, Dennis. And... Uh, Thank you for listening.